उटसाइड Uh, they talked about it and they you know brought it brought the matter forward and it was like breaking the silence so the me too movement inspired other groups to you know talk about what they were going through in the case of domestic violence so quoting from uh, the research it it says that from the abstract it says that the research shows same sex couples are as likely to commit abuse on their partners as heterosexual ones so it's not like first of all the thing is that it's not that only the violence can be uh, practiced on someone because of the gender roles so firstly it you know shatters that glass that no there are cases but those cases in fact are very under reported because these people are you know uh, in one way or another silenced by society for other matters because of their you know sexual preferences and their gender because it does not exactly go again again uh, along with the society so for a long long time firstly these cases were never reported uh violence in the same sex couples is not because of the gender inequality and it plays a lot of other roles like uh psychological and physical and non consenting sexual forms of violence uh, in intimate same sex relationships so while searching about the matter uh, there is a report in bbc which is uh, about 20 years ago there was Uh, the okay, the boy just now came forward that you know 20 years ago his boyfriend uh, imprisoned him in his own apartment and he said that i could still not uh, identify it as domestic violence because domestic violence and its idea was only related to those who were you know experiencing heterosexual relationships and mostly in case of women he said that i did not relate it relate to it and talk about it because i could not even you know uh, say that it was some sort of a domestic violence when he was being beaten up and when he was being locked up in his own apartment so this uh, uh, study is in the bbc it was reported in 2014 and when we read it then it's like in 2014 he's talking about 20 years back so yeah uh, and the the title of this uh, article is is violence more common in same sex relationships on bbc uh yeah so talking about this abstract if you have any questions i can answer them i did not know if we can you know make a proper presentation on like this i just saw that i have to explain what this abstract is about so here is what i have read and analyzed on this um uh, is this uh, video here um uh, it says uh, i i found a few here but i did not find the one that says bbc mm, not no ma'am it wasn't a video it's an article i can share the link in the whatsapp group or i All have right. it in front of me right now should i share All it right. uh i th- i think you can try sharing it and uh, we can try opening it here as well uh, oh. but it uh, this uh, i can see a number of uh, videos on youtube it says the day i had looks at lgbtq domestic violence and a uh, couple of others 
right ma'am maybe so, because i have not uh, uh, i have not studied this on youtube or watched it i don't know what this uh, video is about so but, that's why I, all right that's okay. okay but but uh, is there anything else that you want to say from this abstract right in front of you i have explained what i had in it and if there are any things you want to talk about it i can answer it because uh, that, yeah. that i'm done because uh, i said that if you like you can also read it from here and discuss while reading uh, okay. this this abstract is actually it. this abstract is actually mentioning mentioning a few other points as well yeah and uh, it is pointing to the problem between uh, yes. between small media and big media now it's not clear if social media can be considered small as opposed to big media outlets because it is saying that uh, when us two movement started and like the the way the me to movement had started it says big media outlets uh, started uh condemning these people because they were voicing the victims were voicing their issues and it says this movement counters the inherent misogyny of big media outlets so yeah. uh, right now what you have mentioned you are saying that bbc showed a story i i yeah. suppose uh, or bbc published a story i suppose that story was in favor of uh, yeah. the person and it was not yes. against it wasn't against no. voicing the problem right but yeah. here here it is saying that when uh, these people started voicing their issues and they started sharing their problems uh, with uh, with others by a me to hashtag me to uh, sites or me to movement when it started uh, the backlash was inherent misogyny of big media outlets right mm. it's it's saying right here so i yeah. think this is an uh, this is an important point because uh, normally the media film and media have a tendency of um, promoting certain norms and values and silencing is is practiced widely across many yeah. cultures right so it is just pointing to a problem that when people started voicing their issues uh, the objective of voicing was to empower themselves but when mm. they started voicing it is saying that big media outlets reacted big media outlets started uh, you know they started misogyny uh, Uh, or gave a misogynistic re reaction to these me too movements okay so it means yeah. that uh, because b big media outlets are most of the time supporting uh, views of uh, patriarchy in many cases so it is just uh, pointing to a problem that big media outlet wasn't ready to hear these voices of me too movement So that's why i said that um, it's very important to see what the abstract is exactly saying yeah so i i was i was i was uh, when i read it i did understand that it was how uh, the the uh, the idea of misogyny came forward along with this problem and how media reacted to it in a misogynistic way so that's why i was looking for articles but instead i found one in the favor of uh, which is bbc and considered as a big media platform news platform and uh, so that's why i thought of you know presenting one of the stories that not that, that is the, that uh, uh, that is perfectly fine and that is good that you find a story uh, which actually is uh, a counter argument for this statement given here but this statement would be right as well because the author who is writing this article uh, would have uh, conducted some cord uh, some kind of research before writing this article and uh, i think by reading rest of uh, rest of it uh, we can actually a uh, try finding if she mentioned a specific big media outlet here right 
Mm -hmm. So, uh, uh, as you can see, that this author is actually uh, telling you about literature that she has reviewed. Uh, she says, uh, she mentions Yuzon okay. et al., Fallingstead, and Meisen uh, Shackleford, right? So, you can also see that these three researches that she has mentioned mm -hmm. here are from 2000. I checked. The second one, which is uh, Berkey Fallings, what th this word is. So I did check the second reference, which was violence in gay and lesbian relationships. So it was mostly talking about the same. That the, the point I discussed that it was psychological, physical, misconsenting sexual forms of violence in India. All right. So uh, here she is only saying that literature shows that silence results in perpetuation of, uh, yeah. of uh, violence itself. Because if people don't speak about it, uh, the violence uh, or violence, if people are silent, violence continues. Right. So yeah. here she is saying that it also reflects on power relations not only uh, heterosexuals but also uh, among okay. yes homosexuals or same sex partners also man so, there's one more point that when uh, the me too movement started uh, the me too movement did not uh, reject the idea that how the violence was taking place in the same sex relationships in lesbians and gays they did give them the space uh, I'm not talking about the enough space that they needed about it or how, but they did feel the need that no, we do need another movement which talks about how we go through the same thing. They did not fall under the Me Too movement's banner and they wanted the Us Too movement to be highlighted in a specific way. So, yeah. And how it, it, in this article, the writer is talking about that the news, the, when these things came up, when the news came out, how there was a certain idea of not accepting it uh, in the news media, which is the misogynistic attitude uh, from them. Okay, sure. Uh, here she has mentioned uh, the name of... Uh, uh, of someone who actually went through same-sex abuse. So the author's name is Arno Roig Mora, and she's writing about Kevin Spacey. Yes, Kevin Spacey here. And she, I, I'm sure. So did you uh, try finding Kevin Spacey? Uh, Ma'am, I did read about the case, but I... It's okay because you found a different one. So yeah. I, what I'm saying that uh, I'm not sure if uh, if we will find something here by writing Kevin Spacey. In fact, we do. It says Kevin Spacey is an actor, and yeah. uh, I wonder if she's talking about the same actor in this case, right? So if we go to Wikipedia, we'll probably find some details of what happened to Ke Kevin Spacey or if it is same Kevin Spacey. Uh, and she's I saying that, that one is mentioned in this abstract, so I should find an, another story on it. So I did not that, go with the same. Okay, that, that's okay. That's, that's fine. Okay. And uh, how would we define toxic masculinities that she has mentioned here and toxic masculinity, masculinity in the case of same-sex partners? Um, obviously, it is uh, not about the gender role, that one is a man and another is a woman, and a man thinks that he got power over uh, the woman. But toxic masculinity, I think by this uh, idea of same-sex violence, domestic violence, I think we understand toxic masculinity even better. That it is not just about how, who the other person is. It is about who you become and who you, uh, you know, who you turn into. Being a man and the idea of masculinity and toxicity 
in your you know gender and how you are practicing it what society has fed you and i think it it gives a reflection of that that it's not just about the women you are talking about and you know saying that they're not you know they they're vulnerable to it or how they practice it on them it is about the how they practice it on anyone who is in front of them the toxic masculinity the idea of it so i was taking it that way and i was taking it how you know i think through this it defines it even better that it so, is there okay it is so not it, just about you know, yeah. okay so does it imply that in even in same sex relationship one is uh, stronger or masculine you know has uh, masculine traits and the other is weaker and uh, plays the role of the feminine in the same sex partners um in, yeah, honestly i i don't i'm not really you know sure you about not. that no i don't know that if you know in this relationship how one is acting because i think that what i have read about it is that they are basically tired of that idea of one acting the you know powerful one and one acting the feminine one and one acting like a man and then again it does take place in relationships in lesbian relationships one woman is you know trying to uh, uh, hold on and the other one is being submissive and this idea in relationships i don't understand abhi so yeah i okay. don't think i can uh, i on, i only tied masculinity in and femininity in same sex relationships so this is what i found here right so ha- had i written uh, masculinity and femininity in same sex relationships dot pdf i will find uh, this kind of research articles right mm-hmm. so it is saying uh, masculinity femininity is positively linked to relationship quality so even in gay couples it says that you will find one is more masculine and yeah. one is more feminine yeah. so this is this is a research article but earlier uh, it was showing something on wikipedia sort of thing so what i mean that if you click any of these if you click the wikipedia one or if you click a proper article here in both cases you will probably find this information uh, i ha- i haven't opened any of these uh, articles but i think when you uh, start reading an article on this kind of topic you would most likely learn that uh, even in gay 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 lesbian relationships uh, there are power relations and one partner is more masculine and more yeah. one partner uh, is feminine feminish okay uh, anything from the last paragraph here because last paragraph is talking about representation mm. of intimate partner violence in gay lesbian couples in media so it is just talking about uh, media representations and i believe this is what we had found here okay yeah so all these uh, youtube videos are probably representing and uh, the article that you have mentioned was also yeah. representing uh, same sex uh, violence right or yes okay uh here she is just saying what this article does it says this paper unpacks the interactions that gender and sexuality gender have ठीक है and and it also comments on ideological discourses so the minute you refer to ideological dis- discourses we are probably we are probably referring to what big big media outlets might be showing because big my uh, big media outlet would have this tendency of representing patriarchy stronger than um, you know uh, perhaps humanity in many cases Uh, there is a very famous dialogue from some of pakistani films and uh, you may have heard it in somewhere else also 
that in old days um, a father in a pakistani film would tell his daughter uh, at the time of his marriage ke ab us ghar se tumhara janaza hi nikle yeah right so which probably shows that uh, women were trained in a certain fashion they were trained to be silent they were trained to be passive they were trained not to tell anybody about uh, the problems they were facing at their in-laws or with their husband or wherever so in other words this kind of training ke ab us ghar se janaza hi nikle was um, it it shows that uh, women were trained to be silent and women were trained not to express they were going through uh, this kind of uh, misogyny or violence of um, or they were experiencing in equal power relations right uh, ma'am i would like to talk about a paper i wrote that it was on how a uh, woman were portrayed by uh, the the dramas now that go on the serials tv serials in pakistan so okay, which, when i was which channel would that be ham tv or ham tv ham tv i did i did under ham tv okay and the per, the particular uh, uh, case study that i take was of zindagi gulzar hai zindagi gulzar hai is the drama jo mostly ladkiyon ko lagta hai ki ye वुमेन एम्पावरमेंट के बारे में है या ये एक ऐसा ड्रामा है जो औरतों को स्ट्रॉन्ग दिखाता है और ये यू नो ये नॉर्मल ड्रामों जैसा नहीं है बट आई चोज दैट ड्रामा पर्टिकुलरली टू यू नो पिन पॉइंट थिंग्स के उसमें क्या हो रहा था एंड हाउ द मेकर्स से ईच टाइम दे मेक एनी थिंग लाइक दैट एंड दे टर्न इट इन टू द सेम थिंग दे से दैट इट इज बिकॉज दिस इज वट हैपन्स इन द सोसाइटी so uh, the fact is that over the course of years the media has been turning into a very powerful platform it gives voice and takes away the voice from many from many issues to many problems in the society now the problem of women which has been you know being dragged over and over again and you know now giving the idea that they it, it cannot be silenced the the, the patriarchy the problems you know rise you know due to the issues in it uh, they still you know keep it overshadowing and you know giving the idea that okay even today i did this paper like 2 years ago and uh, even today when i see these dramas they are the same they are the the same the things they going on are same in zindagi gulzar hai there was this woman who is very strong and career oriented and you know she is very ambitious and how her mother keeps on telling her that you know being ambitious is okay but you know you have to be submissive to your husband in a way that you know he he's happy you know she needs to keep uh, her mother in law happy and her sister in law happy and she keeps on asking her over and over again that you know have you called your mother in law you should call her every day so she thinks that you are a nice girl and how you need to act in front of your your husband how you need to be silent on many things and then the, uh, the idea was that okay this is a strong girl and you know she faces the world but at the end of the day she marries the man and when she the, the point that breaks her is that she gets pregnant and she knows that she is going to have baby girls so she gives up on everything because she thinks that no i have to give birth to girls and girls cannot survive without a father and a man you know who you know protects them so i need to go back to my husband who's being abusive to me even so this was the idea even behind a story that was uh, being presented as about a strong woman and a woman empowerment and the idea that okay hamari jo hum maghribi hum mashriqi hain ha hamari mashriqi aurtein jo hain wo kitni you know strong ho sakti hain aur kis tarah wo apna khayal rakh sakti hain but you know wo wali puri cheez bhi us drama mein end pe jo hai wo shatter kar di thi ke nahi end pe you have to you know give up you have to you know put your hands up and you know you have to surrender because it's a man's world and you cannot be you know in it and you know do all you want to do so in this media we have it it's quite you know 
regularly being aired on screen in every other drama serial so today i don't know which one is you know we can call different from the others ke isme ye story nahi hai usme koi na koi cheez usi ek figure ke around ghoom rahi hai so okay. yeah i i think noor perhaps wants to comment or want to add something ji noor um okay so um talking about uh, like if we talking about that drama um zindagi gulzar hai there were some issues with that drama but um the male character he was not abusive towards kashyap um he was verbally abusive the- not physically he was verbally abusive and i'm sorry to interrupt you i just wanted to clarify the point and he got abusive because of the reason that he found out that uh, his own friend sent a marriage proposal to her before and why didn't she tell him before marriage that you know before you your friend was here so yeah he was um, verbally quite abusive to her do you remember any um any wor- like any any kya kehte hain dialogues or because i watched it recently again and um i think there was a way, like kafi heated arguments thi lekin ha there are many issues with that drama i agree with that lekin i i didn't notice any verbal kya kehte hain abuse so i i tell you so when uh, he talks to his sister uh, have you noticed the parts when he is with his friends and doing all the things and going out on concerts till late night and then on the other hand when he sees his sister going out with her fiance he gets mad and then he also asks her over and over again why are you wearing such clothes and then to her, to her, then he uh, gets engaged with one of his friends earlier not, not married but engaged and then the instant he gets engaged with her uh, in a relationship he starts dictating her and then talking about the verbal abuse he gets very uh, angry on kashyap on a lot of things and the heated arguments it's mostly you know controlled by him how he talks to her how he controls it and how things go about that he did in verbal abuse it's not just about you know uh, abusing someone with what would swear words it's not just about that verbal abuse on a woman or on a man or on any you know in same sex domestic you know violence and we see the cases now when i have it's not just about you know one swear word we say to another person it's about what we are giving to the another person psychological effect how we shout on them in a manner that you know it breaks them how we can perpetuate violence on someone through words so when you see the relationship of kashyap and zarun and if you analyze it reading about it and then writing about it you will you know find out how things went in that relationship even when the girl is shown to be a very strong a very you know strong headed woman and you know she knows what she wants and she knows how to go about things but then she is again broken by the same man who okay. you know she married right. at the end uh, i'm not i think myra wants to say something so let's see um, thank myra i just want to basically yes i agree with amna and noor but the concept which i also noticed when i saw it it was this was a really long time ago it was abuse in the sense ki you are pol- policing a wom- woman's spirit her intellect but the abuse is not loud enough to be noticed by others so it was constant microaggressions towards kashyap within a marriage is what i realized uh, while watching the drama there was definitely aggression that i agree with all right uh, okay here in the um, komal know, has some messages i think uh, uh ji uh you are saying she is posting messages i i need to check it uh, okay she has messaged in the chat box i thought she is saying something so okay. i don't know i haven't opened it you can read it loud what did she message uh i need to open the chat box one second ma'am uh oh okay thank you komal she agrees with me 
Okay. Right. All right. Good. Here, uh, in the end, you can see that it is talking about patriotism. Uh, it says homophobia and patriotism are used to justify racism, right? And uh, in the end, homo nationalism. So I was just wondering if it links to what we discussed earlier. Uh, in one of the earlier classes, we did discuss that uh, that parts of media content or parts of film are censored in fear of law and order uh, disorder situations, right? So basically, I was wondering, you know, if you can recall, I had mentioned that in case of Hindu-Muslim marriage in a, in a film, uh, there can be law and order situations in the country. And these, these would be real because Muslims or Hindus would be perhaps uh, protesting why uh, it was a woman, a Muslim woman who married a Hindu man, for instance because patriarchy becomes very important. So I was just wondering this comment on patriotism and homo-nationalism is, an, uh, is linked to uh, silencing of the gender uh, homosexuals in this case, you know, like weaker person should remain silent because in some way it re reflects on culture and when it reflects on culture, it, it also uh, reflects on law and order situations and patriotism and homo-nationalism in some way. So I thought this is actually a bit, uh, uh, you know, like complicated because uh, uh, Roy Gmora, or no, uh, Roy Gmora is actually referring to uh, this idea of patriotism and homo-nationalism, which is uh, somehow merged with it you know, merged uh, with discourses of uh, misogyny uh, on bigger media outlets. You know, bigger media outlets would have the tendency of promoting uh, the norms. And uh, I think that is where this, these two, two words come in, patriotism and homo-nationalism, because then people would start saying, oh, it is our culture. And our culture is this way, women have to stay silent. Or mm -hmm. even in uh, power relationships where one is uh, playing as uh, the feminine within the same sex partners or mas masculine partner. I think that this also reflects on that part because. Ma'am, this also, uh, just now, it also reminds me of something that um, Zindagi Tamasha, the film that is, be that is made by Samad Kusar, and it also. Uh, portrays uh, you know a person who is not straight and you know I, I'm, I haven't watched the film so I don't know the entire thing that but we do get an idea how the story is and when I when when we see the trailer and the problem is and the, the film was you know uh, cleared by the the censor board and it wasn't a problem but the, what the problem became was not the homo uh, you know, nationalism, what we say, it was about the religion. The problem was not made by the idea that, okay, it is because here in Pakistan, it's not, you know, it's a big, big problem. Uh, homosexuality or, you know, LGBTQ rights. And when we talk about it, how people react to them, how when these people are out on the streets, how people see them and everything. But in the film, it was not a problem. It, the problem was made, the religion. The idea that, okay, how the clerics are mad on certain things. So, yeah, ho with the idea of homo-nationalism, I gave, I had this example in my own country. <clears throat> but it's also quite um, confusing. So, yeah. All right. Because okay. yesterday I saw news that was being made a huge problem out of that it was a woman a girl who had to uh, she's being sanctioned and you know case is being prepared against her because she married a girl All right. she, it was a gay couple 
so yeah it was a you know breaking news that a girl is you know marrying a girl and she was also getting involved into you know she was going to get her sex changed so i don't know it was like a huge thing it was on every other channel last night so yeah okay so that actually reflects on a uh, bigger media outlet reaction yeah yeah okay good very good okay thank you thank you all right it was i i believe it was good discussion and i am happy that uh, everybody had um, something to say uh let's go to the next one i think that i'm like bal is not here and i'm no, see- hasan hasan is that hasan no man jahan acha jahangir jahangir you want to discuss yours now uh, yes ma'am lekin main na ye kar liya hai ye wala jo na abstract the argument can be made toxic masculinity wala ye bhi okay so that would be somewhere towards the end of this file yeah uh, yeah i was trying to go you know i was trying ke hum uh, we move in order to thoda sa aasan ho jayega but i can certainly go to yours can you try telling me which page uh, it might be feminism renewed ye page number to mam nahi hai iska id hai nahi page i can understand page number nahi hai page for Page fourteen. Okay, let me try. Hassan, I hope you have also prepared because I was uh, coming to you right now. Uh, but let's go to Jahangir's first. Uh, Jahangir, मुझे जरा अगर आप मुझे abstract के ऊपर ID लिखी हुई है, just like this one. It says abstract ID double two nine six two. So what is two, the three, abstract seven, ID? Two three seven four six. Two three seven four six. This is seven four five, so it should be the next one. Okay, so is this the one? Toxic masculinity, misogyny, feminism. Yes, ma'am. Renew. Okay, please uh, do one thing while discussing this abstract. Do remember that Maria Maron is the author, and uh, mention Maria Maron's name in you know while discussing the uh, this abstract. Oh. All right. So let's discuss it. G. G. Jangir. G. Ma'am, ये argument, ये जो abstract है ना इसमें उन्होंने एक ये चीज जो main discuss की है वो ये है कि जो पहली feminism की वेद थी ना वो Me Too movement के बाद ही नहीं हो. Okay. तो मैं इसमें भी वही चीजें उन्होंने डिस्कस की हुई है टॉक्सिक मस्कुलिटी और मिसोजनी ने जो मतलब इन चीजों को मद्देनजर रखते हुए जो ये इसमें ये रिन्यू हुई है इसके अंदर मतलब मैन यही बताया गया है कि वुमेन को कैसे इंफीरियर दिखाया जाता है और इनपे जो मतलब वो इनकी आवाज में ये रेज करने दी जाती और इस तरह के जो है सारे करेक्टरिस्टिक्स मिलकर ये सारा जो मसला है बनता है इसके अंदर उन्होंने मैम एक इंसल मूवमेंट के बारे में डिस्कस किया हुआ है इसके अंदर उन्होंने बताया है कि मतलब ये मैम इनवोलेंट्री सेलिब्रेट लिखा हुआ इसका नहीं मैम मुझे समझ आया मैंने वैसे इसके बारे में थोड़ा सा पढ़ा था यही चीज लिखी हुई है कि जो जिन्हें मतलब अपने रोमांटिक होते स्ट्रेट है लेकिन इन्हें अपने रोमांटिक और वो मतलब उस तरह से जो पार्टनर नहीं मिलते जो उन्हें ओके यू कैन कंटिन्यू डिस्कसिंग और मैम इसमें इसमें वायलेंस का भी जिक्र किया गया है और इसके बाद मैम इसमें जो मेन उन्होंने सारा बताया ना वो यही है कि ये आप जहांगीर जो आपने अभी कहा था यू कैन सी दैट इन सेल इज एन एब्रीविएशन ऑफ इन वॉलेंट्री सेलिब्रेट वो जो आप इन सेल जिसकी बात कर रहे थे सो इन वॉलेंट्री सेलिब्रेट इज कम्प्लीट वर्ड और इन वॉलेंट्री का इन और सेलिब्रेट का सेल लेके दे हैव कनेक्टेड दिस वर्ड इन वॉलेंट्री सेलिब्रेट ओके ठीक है अनेबल टू फाइंड अ रोमांटिक और सेक्सुअल पार्टनर डिस्पाइट डिजायरिंग वन एंगेजिंग इन मिसोजनी रेसिज्म अ सेंस ऑफ एंटाइटलमेंट टू सेक्स एंड इंडोर्स वायलेंस 
और मैम इसके बाद फिर उन्होंने मी टू मूवमेंट का वही जिक्र था मी टू मूवमेंट इज अमेल रिस्पॉन्स टू सेक्शुअल एजॉल्ट एंड सेक्शुअल हरासमेंट ये सबको पता है कि मी टू मूवमेंट है ये चली थी ये जो मतलब लोगों ने फेस की है ये सेक्शुअल हरासमेंट फेस की उसके अगेंस्ट जब उन्होंने वॉइस रेज की थी तो वो सारी एक जो मूवमेंट थी वो मी टू मूवमेंट थी तो इसी ने बाद में फेमिनिज्म ने भी मतलब यही मोल ले लिया वो सारा मी टू मूवमेंट और फेमिनिज्म मिक्स अप हो गई और जिसको वो डिफाइन कर रही है एज वाइट हेट्रोसेक्शुअल राइट और जिसको इस वजह से शी सेंग इन सेल अलाइंस विद टॉक्सिक मैस्कुलिनिटी तो इट साउंड्स लाइक के इन सेल वुड डू समथिंग व्हिच वुड बी ऑपोजिट ऑफ मी टू यस मैम राइट तो मैं मैं तो अपनी आवाज रेस कर रहे थे और इन सेल में वही चीज हो रही थी जिसके खिलाफ थे वो लोग ऑलराइट सो इन सेल इट साउंड्स लाइक इन सेल वाज ऑपोजिट टू मी टू मूवमेंट ओके ओके गुड मैं जो मतलब दो तीन चीजें मेरे जहन में आई थी मतलब जिसमें वो आवाज मतलब वुमेन्स को अपनी आवाज नहीं रेज करने दी जाती या स्ट्रेस किया जाता सोसाइटी में तो वो बोल मूवी में था तो ट्रांसजेंडर का इशू लेकिन उसमें भी उन्होंने मतलब जो वो देखा जैसे कि वो उनकी माँ और उनकी वो जो लड़का जो ट्रांसजेंडर मेल होता है उसकी जो बहने होती है उन्हें किस तरह से उसके वालद ने स्ट्रेस किया होता है उन्हें ना मतलब ना घर से बाहर जाने देना ना कोई काम ना कोई मतलब किसी किस्म की उन्हें इंडिपेंडेंस नहीं ना पढ़ाई की तो एक ये एग्जांपल थी मेरे जहन में इसके बाद कौन से पाकिस्तान की बात कर रहे हैं किसी और कंट्री की बात कर रहे हैं पाकिस्तान में ओके सो इट्स वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट की आप पाकिस्तान मैंशन करें बिकॉज दिस एबस्ट्रैक्ट इज फ्रॉम यू राइट तो यू का एबस्ट्रैक्ट है एंड यू आर लुकिंग एट दी एबस्ट्रैक्ट फ्रॉम योर पोजिशन तो इट्स वेरी इम्पॉर्टेंट कि आप पाकिस्तान मेंशन करें बिकॉज देन वी कैन सी इफ वी हैव सिचुएशंस दैट आर सिमिलर टू सिचुएशन इन द यू एस और आर सिचुएशन आर डिफरेंट तो जो आपने एग्जाम्पल दी दैट इज परफेक्टली फाइन सिर्फ अगर आप आर्टिकल का ओरिजिन आपको याद रहेगा तो आप उसको अपनी पोजिशन से कॉमेंट करना आसान हो जाएगा ऑल राइट जी आगे सो इट्स क्या कह रहा है कि जी मी टू वॉज वुमन रिस्पॉन्स टू सेक्शुअल असोल्ट एंड सेक्शुअल हरासमेंट और ऑफन परपेट्रेटेड बाय मेन इन पोजिशन ऑफ पावर तो मेरा ख्याल है कि ये काफी छोटा सा साइबस्टेक्ट है ओके हाउ इज इट से इट एलिसिटेड एलिसिटेड ट्रांसपेरेंसी about uh, sexual misconduct so do you feel ke voicing would uh, make it transparent uh, ma'am kis tarah wo ye keh rahi hai na ke me too movement jo hai it uh, elicited transparency kyunki agar aap silent the to cheeze chupi hui thi और आप साइलेंट नहीं रहे और सेक्सुअल मिसकंडक्ट को आपने मी टू में डिस्कस करना शुरू कर दिया तो चीजें ट्रांसपेरेंट हो जाएंगी ना बिल्कुल मैम चीजें ट्रांसपेरेंट हो जाएंगी हाँ तो वो कह रही है कि जी ट्रांसपेरेंसी इंक्रीज हो रही है और मैम इसमें मैंने ना एक और जो मतलब एग्जांपल थी वो इंडिया से है वो ना है तो इसमें कास्ट नहीं होती जो मतलब उसमें भी जो उन्होंने विक्टिमाइज किया होगा ना वो मतलब लड़कियां होती हैं यंग आर्टिकल 15 के नाम से आयुष्मान खुराना की मूवी उसमें भी जो विक्टिमाइजेशन उन्होंने की ना वो भी गर्ल्स की है तो उनके साथ भी इसी तरह होता है वो खैर है तो इससे ऊंच नीच जात से रिलेटेड लेकिन उसमें भी उन्होंने विक्टिमाइज किया ना वो है लड़कियों के लिए इसमें भी 
ओके तो इन सेल का वो जो आप कह रहे थे कि वहां पे आपने मेंशन किया कि यू नो इट सेज ऑनलाइन सब कल्चर दिस इज व्हाट मारिया मैरन वाज आल्सो सेइंग ऑनलाइन सब कल्चर तो इट मींस के जो आपका ऑनलाइन मीडिया है इस क्रिएटेड कल्चर्स एंड आल्सो सब कल्चर्स तो यहां पे वो सिर्फ ये कह रही है यू नो इट इट वाज द सेम थिंग दैट शी हैज रिटन हियर यहां पे उसने कहा ऑनलाइन सब ऑनलाइन सब कल्चर भी मेंशन किया और उसने कहा कि दीज आर द पीपल हु आर अनएबल टू फाइंड रोमांटिक सेक्सुअल पार्टनर जो आपने यहां पे अभी कहा था पीपल हु वर नॉट फाइंडिंग रोमांटिक सेक्सुअल पार्टनर्स उनके एंड से ये इनसेल मूवमेंट स्टार्ट हुई है राइट तो आई थिंक व्हाटएवर दिस 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 पॉइंट इज रिफरिंग टू प्रोबेबली आल्सो रिलेट्स टू व्हाट वी डिस्कस्ड इन द लास्ट क्लास uh because i think ke humne if you can see ke uh nahi humne is course mein nahi discuss kiya uh because there is an yes yahi discuss kiya tha humne in the last class we discussed mommy's matriarchs and other controlling images and in this particular uh, uh, article some black men were saying ke it's hard to find uh you know like uh, romantic partners among black women because they they thought black women were undesirable right so yeah. i think uh, this point is actually reflecting on that part as well uh, you know where people find their romantic they are unable to find romantic partners or sexual partners uh so so it just says when they behave when they can't find they engage in misogyny which means they are saying black women are not desirable if they are rejecting women of their own color uh, perhaps yes, that is also misogyny in, in certain ways okay very nice thank you thank you khatam ho gaya ye i think ye khatam ho gaya okay uh ji who would like to go next jahangir uh, assalam alaikum ma'am uh ji hasan would you like to do it ji ma'am mai ye request karne laga tha if i can do it right now okay so yours is number 4 i suppose yes ma'am uh, uh can you tell me the abstract number is it this one 20658 or next one मैं मैं आपको आईडी बता देता हूं इट इज 20757 20757 ओके सो हियर इट इज इज दिस वन यस मैम ओके कैट कॉलिंग मिसोजिनी एंड विक्टिम ब्लेमिंग यस मैम जी मैम बेसिकली द एब्स्ट्रैक्ट इज अबाउट सेक्सुअल हैरेसमेंट एंड अ लॉ दैट वाज पास इन 2015 इन पोर्चुगल uh it mainly talks about how sexual harassment is a very common issue uh, not in just in the eastern uh, countries but also in the west or uh, ma'am it mainly talks about a law that was passed in 2015 or it basically banned verbal harassment for women on the streets of portugal uh it continues on speaking ke kis tarah uh, digital and social media analysis karke they found out data ke kitna zyada wahan ki auraton mein dar hai uh, har roz bahar jaane pe aur sexual harassment face karne pe unko unko dar lagta hai they fear it uske bare mein soch rahi hoti hai even uh, in its absence they plan for it aur ye sara abhi isi ke andar abstract ke andar ek रेफरेंस दिया हुआ है फेयर चाइल्ड एंड रूडमेंट 2008 का तो अगर हम इसको खोलें और इस पे सर्च करें तो मैम ये एग्जैक्टली यही बात कर रहा है कि औरतों में ये इस कदर कॉमन हो चुका है कि औरतों को घर बैठे हुए भी वो इसके बारे में भी सोच रही होती है कि यार अगर बाहर गई तो किस तरह इस चीज को फेस करना पड़ सकता है इसी तरह इसी के अंदर मैम एबसाइट के अंदर एक और रेफरेंस दिया हुआ है जॉनसन एंड बेनेट टू का which was a survey based article in uh, passed in 2015 in australia jiski research ye thi ke 100% unhone survey kiya tha aur result ye aaya tha ke 100% women jo hai wo fear karti hain sexual harassment ko aur uh, uske alag alag 
इंटेंसिटी लेवल्स पे वो सोचते हैं कि यार क्या हो सकता था क्या नहीं हो सकता था और वो फेयर करती हैं उसके बारे में और उनकी सोशल लाइफ जो है वो इफेक्ट हो रही है उसकी वजह से मैं मेनली ये जो औरतों के हवाले से लेके तो सेक्युलर हेसमेंट कैट कॉलिंग और इन सारी चीजों के ऊपर बात कर रहे हैं कि कैसे फेमिनिस्ट ने एक पूरे मूवमेंट स्टार्ट की थी यूजिंग डिजिटल ऑनलाइन मीडिया प्लेटफॉर्म और फिर टू पे उनकी मेहनत जो थी वो रंग ले आई जब पोर्टुगीज गवर्नमेंट ने ये लॉ पास किया जिसके बाद से हरेसमेंट इज नाउ कंसिडर्ड इलीगल और इट इज कंसिडर्ड एज अ क्राइम और उसके हवाले से सजाएं भी हैं लेकिन मैम साथ ही साथ इसमें ये भी कहा गया है कि नेवर द लेस इट इज पार्ट ऑफ एवरी डे सेक्सिज्म कि इस कदर कॉमन हो गया कि ये हर जगह फैला हुआ है हर जगह से यू मीन ऑल ओवर द वर्ल्ड और पोर्टुगल जिस तरह मैंने आपको अपने कॉन्सिडेंट कनेक्ट का बताया कि उनकी ऑस्ट्रेलिया की रिसर्च भी बता रही है कि वहां पे 100% वुमेन के अंदर फेयर है थोड़ा सा स्पीकर के पास हो जाएं जी और मैम जिस तरह मैंने अभी आपको इसी में एब्सर्ड के अंदर से रेफरेंस दिया जॉनसन एंड बेनेट के 2015 की एक सर्वे के बारे में कि जिस तरह ऑस्ट्रेलिया में भी हंड्रेड परसेंट वुमेन के अंदर फेयर है सेक्शुअल हेरासमेंट का और पोर्चुगीज में भी था जिसकी वजह से इन्होंने इनको ये लॉ पास करना पड़ा तो ये ये कहते हैं कि सेक्शुअल हेरासमेंट और कैट कॉलिंग और ये सारा जो स्ट्रीट सेक्शुअल हेरासमेंट है इट इज ऑल ओवर द वर्ल्ड और हर जगह इसके इफेक्ट हैं अलग अलग लेवल पे अलग अलग इंटेंसिटी में है लेकिन इसके इफेक्ट पूरी दुनिया में है उसके अलावा मेनली यही है कि ये लॉ जो पास हुआ था इसके अंदर डिजिटल मीडिया प्लेटफॉर्म जो थे उनको भी यूज किया गया था उनसे इन्होंने अपनी कैंपेन जो थी वो रन की थी और उसके अलावा इन्होंने फैक्ट्स एंड फिगर्स जो थे वो भी वहां से उठाए थे फेसबुक से फॉर एग्जांपल के लोग सही तरीके से इस चीज को समझते नहीं है इशू को समझ ही नहीं पा रहे जिसकी वजह से वो इसको ज्यादा सीरियस एक सोशल इशू जो है वो कंसिडर नहीं करते मैम मोर और लेस यही इसमें बात हो रही है कि किस तरह फेमिनिस्ट ने अपनी मूवमेंट स्टार्ट की थी और इसके ऊपर पूरा उन्होंने ऑनलाइन जाके इस पर रिसर्च की थी अपनी कैंपेन चलाई थी और सक्सेसफुली इन टू थाउजेंड फिफ्टीन उन्होंने फिर अपना ये लॉ जो है वो अपनी गवर्नमेंट से पास करवाया ओके जी वेरी नाइस एनी अदर थिंग बिकॉज शी सेंग के आई थिंक अभी जहांगीर ने भी यही कहा था कि मी टू एक्चुअली रिवाइव फेमिनिस्ट मूवमेंट्स और फेमिनिज्म यहाँ पे भी शी इज रिफरिंग टू फेमिनिस्ट क्रिटिकल डिस्कोर्स एनालिसिस विच मीन्स के वो जो पहले बात हो रही थी कि फेमिनिज्म मी टू की वजह से ऑल ऑफ ए सडन इट रिवाइव दैट ऑल्सो इज यू नो एंडोर्स हियर जी एनी थिंग एल्स एनी अदर इम्पोर्टेंट पॉइंट आई थिंक यू फिनिश योर्स एंड देन बी हियर समथिंग फ्रॉम तहरीम वो कुछ कहना चाह रही है बड़ी देर से मैम मोर और लेस मैंने जो सारी बातें थी वो समझी जो थी वो एक्सप्लेन कर तो दिया इसमें से ओके ऑल राइट जी तहरीम यू वॉन्ट टू से समथिंग यहाँ पे एक ये लास्ट पॉइंट जो था ये पोलिटिसाइजेशन ऑफ स्ट्रीट सेक्सुअल हरासमेंट इस पे वो जो लाइक टू से समथिंग के पोलिटिसाइजेशन ऑफ सेक्शुअल हरासमेंट का क्या मतलब है पोलिटिसाइजेशन ऑफ कैट कॉलिंग इन अदर वर्ड्स मैम इसका मैंने थोड़ी सी रिसर्च की थी तो आई डोंट नो इफ आई एम राइट और रॉन्ग आई होप सही कह रहा हूँ जो मैंने जो रिसर्च की थी और जो मुझे समझ आया था वो ये था कि जब ये लॉ पास हो रहा था तो वो जो गवर्नमेंट थी और जो गवर्नमेंट बॉडीज थी उन्होंने भी इस चीज को काफी अपने फायदे के लिए यूज किया था कि हम लोग अगर इसके बारे में काम करेंगे तो हमें जो फीमेल जेंडर है उसकी तरफ से काफी एक रिस्पेक्ट मिलेगी तो उन्होंने एक अपना पॉलिटिकल पॉइंट समझने के अपने लिए पॉइंट्स गेन करने के लिए भी इस कैंपेन को यूज किया था कि हमारे लिए जरूरी है कि हमें औरतों की तरफ से सपोर्ट मिल जाएगी इसी चक्कर राइट ओके ऑल राइट सो इट इट जस्ट मीन्स के जो पोलिटिसाइजेशन है पोलिटिसाइजेशन एक्चुअली इंक्रीज रिकोगशन ऑफ वेमेन सोशली स्ट्रक्चरल ऑपरेशन ऐसे ही है 
तो अगर पॉलिटिकल पार्टी ने इसको ओन कर लिया तो बेसिकली इट इट इज सपोर्टिंग ऑल ऑल दोस थिंग्स जो आपने कहा कि उनका पॉलिटिकल एजेंडा और एक उनकी रिकॉग्निशन इंक्रीज हो गई नाइस जी वेरी नाइस जी जी तहरीम यू वांटेड टू से समथिंग और ऐड समथिंग जी मैम एक्चुअली आई आई वाज टोल्ड दैट वी वर सपोज्ड टू गो विद आवर अटेंडेंस नंबर सो आई थिंक हसन ने अपनी पहली वाली फाइल ओपनिंग के कस इसमें इसका फोर्थ आ रहा था बट एक्चुअली मैं दिस इज द 18th एब्स्ट्रैक्ट सो इज इट ओके इफ आई गिव द प्रेजेंटेशन ऑन द सेम एब्स्ट्रैक्ट आई थिंक इट्स फाइन ओके इट्स फाइन बट दैट देन व्हाट विल डू वी विल विल डिस्कस इट नाउ राइट ताकि वी जी so i think he has completed his part so if you want to continue discussing the same article it would be fine okay um so uh, ma'am the article was basically about the gender based street harassment and cat calling which obviously includes the you know the undesirable remarks and activities that um uh, perceived to a specific gender in this obviously they're talking about women and how they face a uh, gender uh, gender based street harassment and uh like generally street harassment doesn't have to include women only like there were uh, there are uh, homophobic and transphobic people as well uh, especially in portugal i read it over uh, where they were like in this abstract obviously they're talking about women but street harassment is very common in portugal and it happens way more than usual so uh this is how uh, uh the cat calling is counted uh, as like how every it's an everyday sexism and that the fact that women come forward with their stories but they are they're not taken seriously and cat calling and uh victim framing this this is so mundane now ke matlab internet pe now everyone whoever comes forward with their stories or with their um like the experiences they are always disregarded they're always the experiences are disregarded and that that is what like why they went online and why they wanted to research online was because they were blamed to uh, they were blamed from uh, uh, unwanted like attention and they think that they were just seeking attention so right um, so uh, you are actually referring to framing and counter framing right it is yes yes right. yes ma'am okay. uh okay. so uh since the this abstract is from uh, this another university uh, in portugal and i'm pretty sure there are higher chances of the traffic wardens being women there somehow because uh with their jobs they don't really differentiate between women and men most of the time but if you think having female wardens in uh in pakistan like whatever has been happening on the street they have never we i i don't know if maybe i'm wrong but i've never seen women uh being in this position and taking this job because literally no one would take this gender seriously if they ever take this job so um what i was thinking uh in portugal i did i did some research there was a phase where women were there uh, as traffic wardens and somehow it got discontinued but uh when they were traffic wardens women felt really safe on the streets even at night because they knew that there is another woman with authority standing there looking out for us so uh, uh around that university uh that uh parameter of that university there were girls start feeling safe because there was a women ward in there but somehow it got discontinued and um, yeah so this was uh, part from where the cat uh, the cat calling and the the street harassment was um me to movement uh, ke bare mein bhi baat karenge ke since you know it's it started on the internet and uh, people would say with it went hey why because Uh, there were so many stories and people started thinking that you know what maybe girls just want attention and they're just coming forward with a story because they don't want the movement to be ended or something 
but um they would ask for proofs and especially when it comes to street harassment there are mostly no proofs so even if they are asked for proofs usually sexual harassment through um like in real life or maybe on phones or texts there you know proofs there but people still somehow have the like they, they have the audacity to ask for proofs for street sexual harassment which is so so common especially in pakistan um i myself like we i am pretty sure all the girls in this cha- uh, in this uh, class would actually agree with me that there have been times where you go out and twice or thrice at least you get that feeling that you're being harassed or you're being looked and you're being um followed around i can't drive anymore because i get followed or something like that so i think that uh they just wanted to take this whole issue online and discuss it the way you know how people the people have been using social media and they just wanted things to get out there but it got really ugly especially on twitter um like women came forward with their stories but again they were shamed and ridiculed um also i'm going to talk about the uh, there's a mention of uh, the convention of Stam- istanbul in it was basically based on you know preventing in uh, preventing violence against women and domestic violence as well so uh, there was an understanding that you know gender based violence actually exists against women because they are women because it's because of their gender so it was an obligation for the state to fully address you know its all its forms to take measures to prevent violence against women and hence why in portugal it said that it said that it was a crime you know to f- this the sexual harassment and cat calling and th- this was turned into uh, like it was illegal now so um the the research basically was telling us about how things were for people uh, things for women in particular are now and um their struggles and their backlash you know they like it it finally ended how they uh you know it turned into an illegal thing and now things are better in fact i was reading someone's uh, personal um experience about uh what really happened after this whole thing happened i think this happened in like 2014 2015 and now uh when you like see how people in that university in portugal especially around are feeling there are girls feeling much safer and their environment and the teachers and everyone is very supportive of this bill that came out so now um yeah that's about it that's about the abstract that i wanted to say okay so basically that she says ke through this uh, this whole attempt was legitimized it says yes. leg- legitimize the seriousness of this offense and naturally mm-hmm. legalization actually comes from uh, from there so mm-hmm. it became a legitimate uh, event yes. in its in its own right so legal yes. developments are about uh, are around legitimacy of uh, violence gender based violence that you said belongs yes. to or was part of istanbul convention yes uh, very nice very nice okay all right thank you any questions any comment thank you um uh, any comments anyone who wants to go next um let's see who is here uh so kanza and komal yes ma'am so kanza do you want to go next yeah ma'am okay can you tell me the article number um ma'am the id number is 200 and no wait 222 
please uh, remember to mention the author's name uh, during the discussion. Sara D. Voiced uh, or Miss D. I also have the same article. Uh, were you not all picking up an article from file one? No, because mine mine is the nineteenth roll number, so I had to pick it from the second abstract. Okay, so okay, let's uh, let's let's uh, let's try discussing it. I think the earlier two, despite being same, were quite different in terms of presentation. So we can discuss it together. Both of you can discuss it together, or you can discuss it one by one. Okay, so uh, I I don't mind doing it together. Okay. No, okay. Good. Kanza, is that okay? Yeah, yeah, it's fine. Okay. All right. Okay, you can start. Um, so it is Kanza and Zarish. Kanza and Zarish. Okay. Good. Okay. So it is Sarah the Uist. Okay. Yeah. Um, should I? Okay, I can start. Um, I'm just going to give an overall summary about the abstract. So, um, basically, this abstract talks about um, online harassment faced by female journalists and how um, the online environment has made journalists more, um, I guess, vulnerable to digital threats, um, which basically are in the form of, um, in this abstract says like misogynist comments or verbal abuse, including like sexual harassment, which then leads to self-censorship affecting the free freedom of speech. Can you hear me now? Uh, yes, we can, but it would be nice if you are a bit louder or closer to the microphone. Um, my, my microphone is right next to my face. Okay, I okay. can try speaking louder. Okay. Um, um, yeah, so basically the thing is a lot of the comments um, the female journalists uh, experience are very sexual and are in the form of body shaming, not just on their content, but also like when they experience um, online harassment, it's usually related to their um, like sexuality. So the panel basically focuses uh, on giving a better understanding of this issue and how different organizations, the news organization are uh, deal with it. They don't talk about it in the abstract, but they say like they're trying to discuss it um, in that panel. And um, it also talks about how like, because of the uh, digitalization, uh, there is like, there are pros and cons of uh, it. And basically, pros are that 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 as a platform uh, as a platform it can be um, used to engage with um, like their audience and to network or fact check. But because of this um, uh, harassment issue, they uh, are facing uh, basically limitations. Um, in voicing their opinions, and especially there is lack of representation for female journalists. So this is like the whole, basically short summary of what the abstract talks about. Um, do you want to add anything to it, Zeresh? Uh, yeah, I think I'll, I'll also start from the start. Um, Ma'am? Can I do please. So, uh, I do agree with what Kansa said about what the about the summary of the article. Um, that so there are journalist. Two, uh, there are two authors, Sarah yes. and Greta. So please mention yes. their names uh, during the discussion. Okay. Um, as I'm, uh, sorry, I'm, uh, kind of, give me one second. So because journalism is, um, 
a very open kind of you know you have to deal with a lot of people that means that more people get to uh, you are the target of more people you know they can harass you both sexually and otherwise you there are so many other there are so many types of harassment other than just sexual harassment jisme impersonation bhi aa jati hai uh, where you know the people they try to impress, uh, impersonate the journalist itself herself basically it's mostly towards female uh, female journalists and uh, then there is doxing uh, when the personal information jaise ke phone number aur addresses vagaira hote hain wo online post ho jate hain so that more people get to target the journalists as well uh, some even try to threat the journalist female journalist kyunki the type of the the type of content they are presenting is uh, against what the per- perpetrator is you know um this is what the perpetrator perpetrator wants uh and um, obviously there is also sexual harassment so that's what the panel this discuss- panel has discussed against ke um responses of the news room to online harassment in Swe- uh, sweden and to raise awareness uh, and experiences on experiences of harassment of journalists and the other speaker is um is presenting a global survey that offers insight to the magnitude and the nature of online abuse ke how um just like the things that i've mentioned ke there are so many different types of uh, threats uh, threats bolu sorry um harassment that a journalist journalist has to face so a global survey of that and uh, basically the third speaker is focusing on the experiences of online harassment of belgian journalists from an inter- intersectional perspective and um then they basically want to discuss the strategies of which they can overcome it and avoid such things um and yeah so anyway uh, what happens is ke because of the because of the harassment that the journalists face they are unable to as mentioned in the article um you know talk freely and they have to censor themselves uh, about what they're saying and unki free speech jo hai wo bhi affect ho jati hai because obviously whatever they say becomes a target of harassment especially for the female journalists and um, i don't think it's mentioned here but many of the male journalists also go through harassment unko kafi face karna padta hai and that could be abuses and uh, it could be in any form as well but uh, in this article particularly they have mentioned females but they have failed to mention males um yeah basically that's about it um the panelist in the last um, paragraph it says the panelists will not only reflect on these issues but also propose recommendations of how uh, challenges for research policy and action can be overcome um and the members um from the audience will also be able to study online harassment in journalism to participate and get involved in the activities of network and yeah this is this was basically um how they could prevent harassment against female journalists and what um uh, actions to take against it all right sorry i was kind of very much lost in the middle No, no, that's perfectly fine. I think it was um, uh, you had closely looked at different paragraphs, so that is perfectly perfectly fine because you are trying to 
re recall or get uh, or trying to find the point again uh, this is by it says that uh, these panelists actually started gendered online harassment research network so journalists do have different kind of uh, networks so it's very interesting to see that uh, they started gendered online harassment network because she's talking about you know not only online harassment but also online sexual harassment so the word um, or the physical presence is unnecessary for online uh, sexual harassment that's how they are taking it up and it's um, it was good to mention that they this is actually abstract submitted by a panel and the uh, panel actually has five speakers so i would assume that these five people probably belong to this gendered online harassment research network right yes, so five, yes. five people if they belong to the, this network uh, they must be coming up with five different papers right so mm -hmm. apparently this is not uh, abstract of one paper it is the abstract of five different papers so it is the abstract for the panel and then she's saying that this panel is actually uh, presenting uh, you know like uh, on presenting on online uh, uh, newsroom online harassment in sweden and then they are talking about global survey so from sweden from sweden they have expanded research to global survey so i assume there would be a number of different countries in the survey and uh, which means that they are analyzing data in geographic con uh, context so speaker 1 was focusing on uh, sweden and speaker 2 is focusing on a uh, global survey of similar experiences and speaker 3 uh, says that uh, you know like speaker 3 has uh, belgian journalist survey online survey uh, that you mentioned uh, she had conducted intersectional kind of study so it's very interesting that they first studied sweden then they studied global the uh, uh, online harassment and after that they looked for this inter uh, intersectional perspective and they picked up belgian right so uh, after this intersectional they are looking at uh, coping strategies right so the, she says that uh, speaker 4 is emphasizing on coping strategies so if you have to deal with sexual harassment how would you cope, cope with it or how you would survive uh and then she says that uh, speaker 5 discusses disinformation strategies so first it was coping strategies and then disinformation strategies so it was nice to hear that uh, you mentioned uh, that it was a panel and that you mentioned that uh, together this panel is actually picking up on so many different perspectives to this harassment and when uh, she mentions coping strategies she also mentions disinformation strategies and corporate actors because people work uh, in corporate world right so everybody who is working uh, so it becomes extremely interesting that how uh, the employer or corporate corporate actors are reacting to this kind of uh, sexual harassment online sexual harassment or harassment uh you know and then uh, how these things uh, emerge from coping to disinformation so i think disinformation actually relates to whatever everybody had said earlier ji uh, did someone want to say something and after mentioning all these things she says that it reflects on quality of life and quality of human dignity because if people keep on suffering from this kind of abuse uh, naturally uh, the quality of life will be impacted it they will have bad life or human dignity uh, uh, can uh, if that has an impact so it would probably cause many other problems uh, did you azrish did you say that it's not covering male uh sexual harassment it's covering female sexual harassment but not male sexual harassment yes i think it's mainly more focused on female rather than male yes. as well because yeah 
yeah uh, i would say that it is so because this uh, this is a journal article right the uh, uh, researchers mostly write very focused articles and focus is of course of course right i know but so, uh, I mean, I was just presenting my point of view that even male journalists fail, face a lot of harassment as well, which they failed to mention. Okay. So maybe they could have just put it like somewhere in there. Uh, yeah, that's perfectly fine. I, I understand you mentioned your point of view, but I would not call it failure to mention. I wouldn't call it failure because uh, the article focuses on female sexual harassment. or uh, harassment of female journalists so it is not failure they, they somebody would write a different article on harassment of male journalists uh because i think one of the earlier articles was also of course, of course. yes uh, when we were reading uh, sada famad's article here about rape in pakistani films sada famad also said that she is focusing on rape in pakistani films she said that it doesn't mean that men are not raped but most films actually she focus on women's rape or attempt of women's rape apart from uh, shoaib mansoor's bowl that focuses on rape of a transgender okay so yeah i i know i know i was just uh... saying that not because i don't accept that female journalists don't get harassed i was just saying because this is a gendered online harassment in journalism discussion and they have mentioned uh, a challenge to the right voice of female journalists but i was just presenting another point of view and i don't think this article is wrong i was just um, you know just mentioning it as my okay. own okay add on i accept your point of view uh, i think it was uh, fine to mention that men also get harassed but that is not a focus of this article uh, okay uh, very nice i think it was uh, very well reviewed okay and i i wanted to add a few more things because um please add please do so so basically uh uh all the speakers are member of uh, this organization like gendered online harassment research network right and i was trying to look up if like pakistan has um their own organization or foundation or something like that to help with this because it is a huge issue and i was reading upon it that um apparently like one in two female journalists face this sort of like gender um based harassment or violence in their work and only 24% apparently uh don't or they say they don't i mean that's what i've read and basically there is um actually a foundation uh i don't know if you know about this lawyer nigata um but she created this foundation uh, called digital rights foundation and um so basically um she uh made this foundation and now it has like 90 members in it and they train uh other female journalists on how uh, about like digital security and she said that the reason why she created this and this is what i felt like maybe is slightly different in other countries compared to pakistan is that she says that it's not only about like facing uh online abuse it's also about like the fear of it becoming an offline abuse because like uh sarish mentioned that people uh would i guess leak the addresses and doxing basically um yeah. and so b- because of that there's a huge issue in pakistan that it becomes like a- offline version of abuse okay so can I, uh, can you share the name of the pakistani organization in the group or in chat room uh, yes ma'am a group would be fine too okay ma'am so are you posting in group or in chat room uh in the group ma'am okay all right 
So yes, I think Nigat Dad is very famous for her work, and um, uh, here she is, and Digital Rights Foundation. So I think it's uh, it's 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 uh, very useful to react to the to the abstract from your position. So if they had uh, mentioned Sweden and Belgium, you have added uh, Pakistan. And uh, it's very useful to see that uh, uh, somebody has actually, a woman herself has formed this organization, uh, you know. So I think it's very useful. Uh, and the article is actually talking about digital rights and online cultures and subcultures and uh, online harassment, online sexual harassment. So I think in that sense, it's very important because uh, she's talking about uh, factual information for engaging with the audience network and personal branding. So perhaps it implies that uh, women are encouraged to brand themselves because many, uh, many journalists uh, focus on personal branding these days. So it's about personal branding and then because of branding uh, experiences of uh, different kind of misogynistic comments, verbal physical threats, uh, sexual online harassment. So it means that verbal for verbal, uh, they can use, uh, they can do it in real life or online and uh, physical threat is something that can actually uh, happen online. So I think it's, uh, it's very important that they are, the article is actually emphasizing on free speech for uh, women journalists, free speech, and reduce the threat of, uh, you know, harassment. G. Um, I don't know if you remember this, like back, like I think two or three years ago, um, there was this very viral uh, video of a, I guess it was part of a news TV show or something like that of Marvi Sarman and this half is um, like a small V. I don't remember his name, but he was from Chamate Ulma Islam or something like that. And he, um, I wanted to share that clip, but it was, I guess, too vulgar to share. Um, basically, the very famous line he uses is like my shalwar or something like, like basically like right uh, in front of her while she was sitting there and she was very uh, felt very threatened she's an online uh, not an online but she's a journalist and women rights activist i don't know if you remember this was, like, uh, three years back. you can you can certainly mention it like you mentioned uh, digital rights foundation you could also share a link to that one you you mentioned uh, an organization and a journalist. So I, I believe that these is, uh, these things are very common even in Pakistan. And uh, I, I know a woman journalist who left Pakistan perhaps two, three years ago because she felt that uh, she was experiencing uh, abuse uh, in person and otherwise. Uh, and she was, uh, you know, like... Uh, she was subjected to many kind of misogynistic comments, even in press club uh, at uh, Shimla Pahari. So I would say that uh, women do experience and uh, the incident that you mentioned would be reported incident because uh, if you have read about it somewhere, I think it's, uh, it's important to mention things that are actually reported because many of these articles or abstracts are actually pointing to to importance of reporting, importance of speech, or importance of voicing. Uh, that apparently seems to be the first step uh, towards control of misogyny. Uh, journalists do engage in self censorship, uh, which means that both male and female journalists engage in censor censorship. But it sounds like that uh, perhaps self-censorship is more important for females because uh, here some, some, someone other than normal uh, 
some other uh, reaction is experienced. Uh, normal reaction would be like agencies do not want journalists to say something or people feel offended. But it sounds like women uh, have to worry, worry about uh, agencies and people and certain other factors. So it seems that factors uh, faced by female journalists would, would perhaps be more in number, perhaps, because until tested or until studied, we cannot say that uh, there is a longer list of uh, variables. Uh, you know, when, when it comes to women journalists, online harassment or online sexual harassment. So I think that's, that's very nice. Um, anything else that you want to add or anybody else wants to add? All right. Thank you, Komal, and thank you, sorry, uh, Kanza and Zarish, Kanza and Zarish, I think uh, the, the article is very well covered. Okay, so who is next? Maya? Yeah, I'm next. Uh, Komal. Okay, Komal. He Ji, was Komal. Kanza and then he was me. Ji. Ji, so the idea is double two, six, three, one. Uh, double two, six, three, one. Is it right after this one? Yes. Okay. Should I start, ma'am? Yes, please. Okay, so this uh, abstract talks about, the title is, When Sexualized Violence Becomes Part of Your Job Description and the Organizational Response to Online Abuse of Female Genders. The session type is panel submission, and the author, to have only one of the authors is mentioned, uh, that's Greta. Okay, so Greta. Begin, Greta Gober. Yeah. yeah. So before I begin, I would like to um, explain because it's a big conclusion. It happens in this. Organizational response. Kya hota hai? So in my understanding, I feel that the people who are in the power, the people the head of the media houses, and their response, the online abuse of female journalists, is what it means. So the abstract starts by a research that states that hey, women in media and journalism are subjected to more online abuse than the, than the ones who are not in media. And the source that is given is Fogo Media Institute 2016. So this study is basically, uh, the, the issue rather, is basically seen with different perspectives. Uh, number one, which is a problem in her eyes, in her understanding. Which is, one is the freedom of expression. Online abuse be a form of uh, freedom of expression. Dusra, uh, the communication style ka word use kiya hai Ki how uh, your style matches. Why is there online abuse uh, on the female journalists? So you can uh, look through this angle. Uh, the second point I would like to make is that uh, the media houses, organizations, they don't take the responsibility of protecting the employers from online abuse. I will link it to the link that we have to do with the French sociologist, anthropologist, philosopher, and his name is Bordeaux. So, he is basically a theory that we have to do with the abstract. Uh, the journalistic theory. And Aborju explains that the social world is structured around two opposition between two forms. The uh, structure of the world in the social world is divided into two kinds of power. Mein, uh, um, divide hua hua hai. Uh, the one is economic and the second is cultural. Economic includes the money, the assets. And the cultural includes education, 
technical expertise, verbal abilities, artistic sensibilities. So the, the point he makes is that the person and the organizations, the individuals and organizations, who unconsciously or consciously, I don't know, in both of them, they compete within the two forms. For this reason, we can extract a point out of this. Okay, why doesn't the organization respond to the online abuse of female journalists? It's because they are worried about the, the, the name they have, about their reputation. Um, and the next point that she makes in the abstract is that the more, most of the organizations do and they do not have female formal policies on training employees or in cyber protection. Uh, they do not have policies which can through go but ask us to get any steps less okay it's going to solve for me and the online abuse to a normally thought of that I can see a known say I got um can get online calm that in journalism me to online abuse this is stranger say I got up in PC customer say I got but the point that she makes is kids not only uh, the 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 people instead the strangers but the online abuse can come from the colleagues as well jahan pe workplace jahan pe wo kaam karti hain aur iske liye unhone ek uh, reference bhi diya hai jo ki government 2017 ka uh, jo hai wo reference hai and she says ke why does the organization have so much confusion in uh, tackling this this problem is ke wo abhi tak sure nahi hai ki is uh, masle ke liye hum kya kar sakte hai uh, that is why this this issue is so complicated and next theory jo unhone mention ki hai wo sara ahmed ko mention kiya hai and the the name that she is referring to is feminist air um, basically, we can say that this issue of online abuse ki jo, uh, masla hai, we can address this issue by picking up Sarah Ahmed's theory on feminist hair. So I would explain what Sarah Ahmed says when she talks about feminist hair. So she basically says that the uh, sounds are called sound. Keh rahe hai, who sound basically to complaints at the end or to get a say uh what the heck to get up uh, as a society so not each other up key will me up is issue where just getting our body personal level page are keys key back in the journey is our animal to look at the end the sounds of no complaints about violence refusal to laugh at sexist jokes not to comply to unreasonable demands to require a feminist hair is to hear those sounds as speech that when you hear a woman complaining about you a man or anybody even a woman being misogynistic or um, cracking a joke that is sexist in nature to is a core this why me complain उसको complain की तरह ना लिया जाए क्योंकि वो अब complain नहीं है वो एक speech बनने चाहिए ताकि उसका एक collective असर बढ़े इसका एक मैं personal if I'm allowed तो मैं इसका personal example है मेरे पास कि if uh, the men of my house if they make any sexist joke तो मैं बहुत ज़्यादा react कर देती हूँ consciously होता है unconsciously लेकिन हम मुझसे नहीं बर्दाश्त होते हैं ये sexist joke तो वो वो बोल जाए कि यार no, it's very difficult to sit with you anymore. So I said to better need us. So I was just uh, reflecting on their statement. Activism say that they have a picnic or two to battle or joke to get jokes. Jo pellet, the pellet times me in jokes. You per bad the OTT. Uh, you casual sa joke ta or we mind me get that or they could never buy me a mazag. लेकिन आप थोड़ा सा जब इसके ऊपर हम रिएक्ट करते हैं तो वो बोलते हैं कि वी आर टायर्ड ऑफ यू तो आई वाज जस्ट कंपेयरिंग कि आप 
एक दो साल में या फिर चलो बीस साल कह लो ट्वेंटी ईयर्स में ही हमारी बातों से हमारे रिएक्शन से थक गए हैं अगर आप इसको कंपेयर करें कि हम औरतें या फिर मेन एज वेल जिनको ये इस तरह के कॉमेंट्स मिल जाते हैं कि यू आर नॉट मैन इनफ यू आर नॉट मैस्किल इनफ तो हम तो ये फ्रॉम द बिगनिंग देख रहे हैं तो वी कैन से हंड्रेड ईयर्स ऑफ इंड्योरिंग दीज जोक्स और वर्सेस ट्वेंटी ईयर्स ऑफ आर एक्टिविज्म जो है वो आपके लिए इशू बन चुका है तो सारा अहमद का जो है बड़ा ही अमेजिंग सा इसके ऊपर एनालिसिस है कि आप फेमिनिस्ट एयर जो है उसको अप्लाई कीजिए उसके थ्रू बात करें और शी हैज टेक इन सम इंटरव्यूज एंड थ्रू थ्रू दोज इंटरव्यूज शी हैज ड्रॉन कंक्लूजन कि जब उन्होंने इंटरव्यू किया बच्चियों का यूनिवर्सिटी के स्टूडेंट्स का या फिर अपने कलीग्स का जो औरतें थी She found out कि जब जैसे जितना मैंने उनसे बात करना चाहिए जितना मैंने उनको फेमिनिस्ट एयर देना चाह उतना ही द मोर पीपल टॉक टू मी जितना आप सुनना चाहते हैं विद एम्पथी विद सेंस ऑफ रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी कि आप उनके स्टोरी को आप उनके स्टेटमेंट को आप उनके पेन को हर्ट ना कर दें या फिर उनको आप रिजेक्ट ना कर दें अनकॉन्शियसली भी तो उसके लिए आप फेमिनिस्ट एयर अप्लाई करते हैं जब आप एक तरीके से उनसे बात करते हैं दैट आई एम ऑल एयर्स टू यू आई एम लिसनिंग टू यू आई अंडरस्टैंड आई कैन रिलेट तो दिस इज आई आई थॉट कि वाज वेरी कमेंडेबल टू मेंशन इन दिस एब्सट्रैक्ट इसके अलावा व्हेन वी कम नीचे आकर तो शी से इसके ये पेपर जो है ये टैकल करेगा कि ये ऑर्गेनाइजेशन जो है ये किस सूरत हाल में किस सरकमस्टांसिस में और किस को मदद देना चाहती है इस ऑनलाइन अब्यूज के मामले में एक और एग्जांपल आई वुड लाइक टू कोच मैं जर्नलिस्ट तो नहीं हूँ बट बट देर टाइम्स जब मेरी वो आई रिसाइट आई राइट पॉइंट तो जब मैं वो लिखती हूँ और वो कभी वीडियो चली जाती है कोई ऑनलाइन आ जाती है तो आई रिमेम्बर और बी बी सी उर्दू कवर्ड माई औरत मार्च पोएम एंड दे वर लाइक वन थाउजेंड कॉमेंट्स थ्रेटनिंग टू किल मी कि इसका नाम पता चले नाम हालांकि ऊपर ही लिखा हुआ था उर्दू में तो हम इसको ये कर देंगे वो कर देंगे देवर रेप थ्रेट्स देव थिंग्स अबाउट मी सेट अबाउट मी जो कि आई आई थिंक आई कूड शेयर विद एनी वन इन माई फैमिली माई फ्रेंड्स न्यू मुझे ज़्यादा इफेक्ट नहीं हुआ आई वुड लाई क्योंकि मुझे पता है कि जो मैं बात कर रही हूँ वो बड़ी नई है मैं हमारे सोसाइटी के लिए नहीं नॉट द वर्ल्ड बट आर पाकिस्तानी सोसाइटी तो जब आप नई बात करते हैं जो कि इतना नया आइडिया लेके आता है कि माई बॉडी माई माइंड मेरा जिससे मेरी मर्जी वाला ये जब बात करते हैं तो बैकलैश तो आएगा तो आई वॉज प्रिपेयर फॉर इट शुमाइला माई टीचर शी वॉज ऑल्सो काउंसलिंग मी कि ये तो होना था एंड शी वॉज कॉन्स्टेंटली आस्किंग मी कि आर यू ऑल राइट एज एट एम ऑल राइट क्योंकि आई न्यू वट वॉज गोइंग टू हैपन आफ्टर दिस आई वॉज प्रिपेयर बट इफ वी थिंक अबाउट इट फ्रॉम द अदर परस्पेक्टिव कि अगर मेरी जगह का कोई और बच्ची होती जो कि इतनी जिसको जो फेमिनिस्ट नहीं होती या फिर जो जिसको ये नहीं पता होता कि पूरा कॉन्शियसनेस उसका डेवलप नहीं हुआ होता तो और टू बी वेरी ऑनेस्ट हम सब एक जैसे नहीं सोचते हम जब सबका एक जैसा मैकेनिज्म नहीं है चीज़ों को लेने का नफरत को डील करने का या फिर हेट को डील करने का हम सबका डिफरेंट तरीका होता है तो शायद मेरी जगह कोई और बच्ची होती तो वो बेचारी डिप्रेस हो जाती और उसका राइट भी बनता है जब एक हजार बंदा आपके पीछे आ जाता है और फॉर नो रीजन माय पोम एंड नथिंग इन पर्टिकुलर जो कि मर्दों को या फिर किसी की कॉन्शियसनेस को किसी रिलीजन को हिट कर रहा था इट वाज दिस माय एक्सपीरियंस वट आई थॉट ऑफ माई सेल्फ एज अ वूमन एंड वट आई थिंक ऑफ दुमन अराउंड मी तो मेरी पोम उसके ऊपर बेस थी दैट्स इट और उसके ऊपर ये था बैकलैश आया तो आई वॉज 
ट्राइंग टू लेट कि मैं जर्नलिस्ट तो नहीं हूँ लेकिन हाँ मेरा एक्सपोजर है चार पांच दफा कि कैसे जो ऑनलाइन अब्यूज है वो अफेक्ट कर सकता है मुझे नहीं किया वो अलग बात है लेकिन अगर कोई और मेरी जगह होता तो वो हो सकता था इसे वो अलग Okay, so you are saying it was on BBC's Facebook page. Yeah, BBC only. Hmm, Facebook page. If you can, sh- if you have the link. I yes, I can share it with you. Okay, if you have the link, we can try finding it. Sure. Okay. Uh, all right. We'll. Um, if you have the link, I can try opening it now. Um, yes, ma'am. Just trying to search for it, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Are you sharing in the group or in chat room? Uh, ma'am, I will share in the WhatsApp group. Okay. I can. Yeah. Uh, if if you like, you can uh, talk about a uh, couple of verses from your poem that will actually explain why people reacted. Sure, sure, ma'am. I will. अगर मुझे वो poem मिल जाए बड़ी पुरानी है. All right. Uh, the the poem was basically called Book Chicken, uh, the iconoclast. Or the idea was के आप जो बुतों के जो मर्दों के बुत बन गए हैं हमारे माशे के अंदर, we should break them. That's it. थोड़ी सी इतनी सी बात मिलेगी. मैं भी सर्च कर रही हूँ. Uh, all right. Mm-hmm. All right. If it's it's okay if we can't find it right now, but I would uh, like to suggest that uh, you create your CV and include the link in your CV. So next time you won't have to find it. Okay. Okay, ma'am. Sure. Maybe I will see the the poem. You found it. Yeah. Okay. मैं पढूं क्योंकि मैं वो क्योंकि वो टाइम अगर कम है तो मैं नहीं पढूंगी वो दूसरे लोग भी हां उस उसमें से उसमें से यू कैन सर्टेनली मेंशन समथिंग इफ यू कैन शेयर द लिंक आई विल ओपन इट हियर सो आई कैन अंडरस्टैंड यू आर सेइंग कैन आई फाउंड द पोएम ऑन माय मैकबुक जो कि मेरे नोट्स के अंदर है वीडियो okay. मुझे मिल गई है लेकिन उसका शेयर जो है वो WhatsApp पे नहीं आ रहा वो Facebook पर ही आ रहा है अच्छा ठीक है तो आप आप कॉपी कॉपी कर कर दें आई जस्ट वांटेड टू इट सेंड सेंड So, is this the one? Uh, is this the one? Uh, Komal, can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. This is I a video. Was... Yellow paper. Yeah, well. Okay, so this is the video. Yeah. Yeah. 
Okay, so it's not something printed. It's actually something recorded. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so I think that that wasn't very long, but that's that's nice to know. Uh, okay, any any comments, uh, everyone? Any comments on feminist year? Uh, Sara Ahmed, I, be, I, I, I think I'm not sure. I think she's a Pakistani woman living in Australia. Ma'am, ma she, she, yes, yes. She is a British Australian scholar. Uh, British Australian. Yeah. So, okay. So I can understand that there are uh, cases of migration and migration from one country to another. So I can understand that, um, you know, that uh, that refers to many other kinds of misogyny or, uh, you know, even also uh, some sort of impact of controlling image or some kind of uh, problems. But it also sounds like that uh, it's very interesting to see that she's mentioning feminist ear as a theory yes. and as a methodology for research. So I think it's very interesting to see that uh, sh she is talking about uh, uh, media organizations as well, because I think one of the uh, abstracts earlier also said uh, media as uh, organizations reacted to these things in a particular way. So it's interesting to know that uh, that some of these do mention that media or um, do mention official commitment to stop this form of violence so unless i think so voicing becomes very important in come in terms of misogyny and uh, if voicing is absent so commitment will also be absent because one thing follows another in even in the um, portugal case uh, the author was talking about uh, changes in law because of voicing and here we can see that uh, if somebody had mentioned that organizations were reacting negatively to uh, misogyny or me too movement here it does say here it mentions an official commitment to control misogyny or sexualized ob abuse online of their female employees. So it, it, it sounds very interesting. Okay, Komal, thank you. Uh, very nice. Mm -hmm. I think uh, you provided some very interesting information and it was extremely nice to see that uh, you can relate it to culture and you can also relate it to personal experience. So that mm -hmm. becomes your, uh, your own witnessing uh, and you yourself appear as, um, as source of information. So citation would be to you yourself. Okay, very nice. Gee, uh, all right. Anybody wants to add something or ask a question? All right, Myra. Uh, Myra Amir, do you want to go next? Um, miss, like she's written in the chat that she will be back after 10 minutes. So, okay, I um, think you, you can start then. Okay, ma'am. Um, uh, um, can you all hear me? Uh, which abstract is it? We can all hear yes. you very well. Uh, ma'am, my ID is 23748. It's the last one. No, uh, it's the last one. G misogyny without borders. 
Okay, yes. so the authors are Meredith Pruden. Yes, so the title of my um, abstract is Misogyny Without Borders, A Clash of Cultures, Mediated Misogyny in the Era of Global uh, Conservative Populism. And the authors are Meredith Pruden. So this abstract focuses on this very um, a very famous incident, and it was being reported ardently uh, um, in, in all forms of media back in 2018, where Brett Kavanaugh, a contender for the U.S. Supreme Court judge, he was um, accused of harassment by a very famous uh, scholar, Dr. Christine Blasey Ford. So after this, the while the this ongoing uh, uh, reporting was going on, uh, what happened was that the the president of United States himself entered this um, uh, this very topic uh, this uh, sorry this um, incident and uh, made some unfavorable tweets uh, which were uh, which were clearly. Uh, siding with the uh, with the alleged person, where he accused a doctor Christine uh, Ford of uh, putting false uh, accusations on a man, and furthermore, um, that we we also saw the same narrative then prevailing, and we also saw media reporting it in different ways. Now, the purpose of the article is to understand how. Um, what exactly is mediated misogyny, how it functions within a global conservative populism uh, or within a structure of those ideas and how all of this comes back at a colonial um, uh, or, or engages with colonial discourse or engages with the sort of ideas. So firstly, in order to start, we must understand what uh, what the author means by mediated misogyny. Mediated misogyny is basically a term that relates to uh, that uh, relates to uh, mostly cyber harassment. However, it's a, it, it focuses on intersections of gender, technology, and media, which means that mediated misogyny focuses on how uh, misogyny um, tends to prevail through these three things and how they, they are interconnected within these three things. And hence would also be prevalent in, uh, uh, hence the culture around uh, the way gender technology and media function in modern times uh, also um, is related to how the misogyny then is structured and in, um, invoked. So, um, so basically what, uh, what mediated misogyny would further uh, engage with this how social media and other forms of media have their own structures of misogyny which are different from what we see in um, in normal day-to-day -day life for example uh, uh, there were the the one article posted on um, on Google Classroom was by Bell Hooks and it focused on uh, gangster rap and how media brings out uh, a very misogynistic figure of both men and women and it, which artists who uncritically make those songs tend to further propagate the stereotypical image of black men and women. Uh, this uh, narrative, as you see, is more re relevant to media and will not be seen in um, reality or within our day-to-day -day functions. So, um, yes, so some statistics regarding this. Uh, so what mediated misogyny would then, obviously, since it's relevant to media, uh, we would take online harassment into account and online harassment has some very interesting statistics. Um, may, uh, so in terms of online harassment, men tend to suffer more of it, which is a surprising statistic. However, uh, they tend to suffer more of name calling and physical threats. However, women are more likely to go through gender-based and sexual harassment in online spaces. And around 21% of women uh, who are aged from 18 to 29 are um, uh, tend to experience sexual harassment of some sorts online. And this is twice more than that, that which men experience in terms of gender-based or sexual harassment. 
uh, revenge porn is another example of mediated misogyny uh, as it uh, is also something used to subjugate uh, women so basically online harassment uh, now as we can see there are other um, there are other uh, ideas regarding it that it is not simply based on gender it is also based on an intersex with other forms of abuse of uh, of people in general and such and goes as far as ideologies related to racism homophobia classism and ableism so um when we talk of uh, class and color within online harassment we also see that online harassment is um uh, it is it is a form or way where people of um, cultural or ethnic minorities are further subjugated so let's say black uh, muslim or within the us uh, black muslim caucasian women or men would let's say be more subjugated to uh, harassment of sorts uh, now basically um okay so this uh, abstract focuses on how or uh, brings out a very deep seated uh, notion within our culture that prevails in um, prevails on cyber spaces where we see how inequality and discrimination is prevalent within the technology sector which is uh, considered to be very innovative and very modern however we see that ideals dating back to centuries um, prevail here so in regards to this um, uh, to this very abstract and what this abstract tries to say now we move on to conservative populism and how it is linked to uh, it is linked to mediated uh, misogyny so basically maria b manon in her book called misogyny and media in the age of trump uh, relates to this very incident and uh, generally the tweets of president trump and we do not um, when we look at conservative populism i would like you to uh, envision beyond the us i would like you to envision the state of pakistan where we have a conservative uh, populist um, uh, po populist government in some senses and uh, we i would like you to also think of the president of philippines now both our um, uh, head of state mr imran khan along with the uh, philippines president both have been embroiled embroiled in some forms of misogynistic statements the president of philippines for example has stated his interest in uh, fine looking women and has um, made multiple remarks uh, derogatory remarks about women our own prime minister um, was accused of harassment prior to his election and uh, and and there were many examples of um, him engaging in unfavorable uh, things as well or uh, making statements about women for example his very famous a uh, statement about the me too movement and him saying that uh, the 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 feminists of today are from a different class or 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 they are reflective of the of the class divide uh, within the country so we see that conservative populism is not limited to one nation and in order to understand conservative populism maria b manon says that it is it is it is a uh, it is one thing which um which tends to further accommodate misogyny within our entertainment culture within our uh, media and within our digital space as well so we, basically the 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 values behind misogyny are that it is a way or form of uh, of pursuing control surveillance and discipline of the feminine entity now the conservative populism holds the same ideology except for the fact that it disciplines the common citizen which is it aims to either uh, assign them uh, the uh, it aims to reform them in some ways to be good and right and good and right is based on morals of um uh, are not based on critical models of any values however they are based on values that have been held for the longest of time so conservative populism ke hisab se then it established it is very highly linked to 
establishism which means ke it aims to deconstruct uh, science academies it is uh, it supposedly is against the elite and um, the media hence we see a lot of uh, mr trump's uh, uh, tweets against free media it is uh, in, it, it is ingrained in ideas of nationalism <coughs> isolation and isolationism and authoritarianism so these elements are focused then if you look at the time when these ideologies came about family structures and gender roles at that time were very different from what we see in modern days they were limited to the nuclear family where the male would be given the roles outside of the house and the female would be given roles related to domesticity and where the the woman or the female would embody uh the values and notions of the cult of true womanhood which are the four disciples that we discussed in our previous class so as we can see um since conservative populism also focuses on on a sort of family life and gender roles that date back to uh, a, a more patriarchal or a more misogynistic time uh, you in modern times it cannot by essence accept the the reversal of gender roles or reformed gender roles or or not or gender roles that do not consist of binaries which is that the gender roles which are more fluid that is something which conservative populism cannot accept because uh कंजर्वेटिव पॉपुलिज्म का ये समझना हमारे लिए जरूरी है कि उसका अपना सर्वाइवल मिसोजनी के तौर पे बेस्ड है विच इज कि जितनी मिसोजनी प्रिवेल होगी जितनी वो आइडियाज वो आइडियल्स वो पुराने तौर के प्रिवेल होंगे उतना ही कंजर्वेटिव पॉपुलिज्म भी नुमाया रहेगा हमारी सोसाइटी पे सो सो बेसिकली इट 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 फोकस ऑन रिटेनिंग अ स्टेटस को एंड हेंस feminism is a direct enemy of conservative populism because feminism aims to detract status quo itself it aims to deconstruct status quo and a feminism of modern day intersectional feminism aims to um enlighten and to uh, and to further bring up marginalized communities so now i hope that these two things mediated misogyny conservative populism and the links they have or what they have against feminism is a bit more clearer so now i will take you all uh, i will try to connect this with how it is directly linked to a colonial presence as you can see in the abstract um the person um the the, the abstract does sta uh, state i hope misogyny is an ever present echo of this colonizing discourse so the the writer over here in the abstract states how uh, to explore the topic of mediated misogyny and global conservative populism this presentation takes a feminist critical uh, cultural approach um so as we can see that this the author um, of this abstract tries to connect it with colonialism and the way that uh, maria b menon connects it is that these ideals of whatever i've explained which are inherent of um, of uh, conservative populism are aimed at subjugating women or marginalized groups in the same manner that colonial powers did of that time uh, within colonized countries and so we can see that while it is not directly uh, colonized while those countries having a narrative are not directly colonizing uh, the th the other countries however the values the imperialist values within these are um it inherently the same hence um the, the the gist of this abstract is that um aapko yahi ideo ideology ek taur pe मिलती है मीडिएटेड मिसोजनी के थ्रू जो एक कॉलोनियल स्ट्रक्चर के तौर पे वेयर वेयर द ऑटोनोमी ऑफ वुमेन द ऑटोनोमी ऑफ मार्जिनलाइज कम्युनिटीज एथनिक माइनॉरिटीज रिलीजियस माइनॉरिटीज एंड एंड टू हैव अ मोर लिबरेटेड स्ट्रक्चर व्हिच इज नॉट कंसिस्टेंट विद द स्टेटस को इज नॉट रिकॉग्नाइज्ड
so this was it all right um excellent uh, a bit long but excellent um, okay uh, anyone any comments on what uh, nimra just discussed Nimra, it was very nice to see that you uh, mentioned a few different presidents from U.S. to other countries, including Pakistan. I was wondering if uh, what you mentioned, Imran Khan said about feminists of today uh, belong to a different class. I wonder if that is here, uh, because uh, this is a clip that says, I completely disagree with the Western concept of feminism. Uh, did you have a link for, the, for what you mentioned? I think this clip would be uh, available online. And I think uh, Komal did mention something earlier uh, in regards to, uh, you know, like uh, what happened from, uh, uh, from this uh, TV play, Mere Paas Tum Ho to uh, this uh, woman who said, Mera jism, meri marzi. So I think uh, there are a few different things which are very important in regards to the last two presentations that we just discussed. I, I wonder if that comment would be here. Uh, it would be nice if you can find the link to this comment. And I also feel uh, you probably have a lot of data uh, which is... Uh, which comments on uh, this particular abstract because you were discussing more concepts that are there and uh, apparently you had conducted more research to uh, explain uh, different concepts which are mentioned here you know uh, um, ma'am i didn't uh, sorry i'm cutting you off i didn't exactly find um, proper articles i could only access like the few bits and pieces of books and a few articles so i yes. can share them online uh, as for the clip i don't have it however i can find it i think the one that you uh, yes this one is probably uh, the one that i was also referring to it's it's not very long it's 2 minutes long i i would play it just to see if that comment is here मैं बिल्कुल डिसग्री करता हूँ ये वेस्टर्न कॉन्सेप्ट से जो जो फेमिनिज्म की मूवमेंट चली उसने माँ के रोल को डिग्रेड कर दिया comments were taken out of the context maybe he did not mean to say those i want to assume that he was play or trying to play to the right which is something that a lot of politicians in pakistan have to do i would say that his views could have been more more well rounded and better articulated he needs to probably look more deeply into women empowerment and uh, address uh, the subject accordingly really would love to see a 50% women representation in the cabinet work on electoral reform he should be focusing on human development projects um and he should also be focusing on macroeconomic stability so want him to focus on uh, the ma'am may I add a point over here right so apparently that that is not here because uh, it only uh, refers to comments by different uh, women or feminists g Yeah. Ma'am, uh, so I'd like to point out to the two parallels within this very interview that are created. As I mentioned, K, um, conservative populism ka focus he had to to retain the roles that women have retained since previous times, and that's exactly what our prime minister mentions. K, ek ek ma ka role kharaab kar diya because. the mother is now outside of the house she is functioning as she's she's a, the mother is not simply restricted to the house anymore she's a she's a working mother now she has a, she has an identity of her own as a woman so you see ke wo ek dichotomy aa rahi hai and and what the women have mentioned 
कि आप कैबिनेट में सीट्स के ऊपर फोकस कर सकते हैं औरतों को ज्यादा प्रोवाइड कर सकते हैं आप लीगली तौर पे उन्हें ज्यादा तो दैट्स दोज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट एस्पेक्ट्स आर नॉट बीइंग फोकस्ड अपॉन बट दैट्स एग्जैक्टली व्हाट दिस इंटरव्यू इज अ वेरी गुड एग्जांपल ऑफ हाउ कंजर्वेटिव पॉपुलरिज्म फंक्शंस के इट ओनली um wants you to re- restrict the role of male and female to what it has been rather than progressing forward to really focus on important things okay so you meant these interviews interviews in this video uh ji ma uh, ji these came around the time of oris march this year so okay all right sounds very nice okay uh, uh, i w- on the only thing uh that i wanted to add at this point is that uh, uh you have a lot of data on this topic uh you know especially whatever we were discussing right here so if you can find some uh, clips uh, from uh, any of pakistani plays from hum tv or arry or if not from a pakistani play Uh, maybe from uh, from any film that you, that you would uh, think um, of so i i, I, I was o- only suggesting that uh, if you are interested you can develop your mid term paper on this topic uh, okay. i'm only, i'm suggesting this because i thought you perhaps conducted a lot of research uh, for this presentation and you already have a lot of data the only thing that you do you you would need further would be the clips from tv play from one play would be better uh, or you can have it from couple of different play, plays that would also be fine as long as your spine of paper is around one topic so i thought that perhaps you have a lot of data and you can use that data and uh, you can also uh, make a list of uh, clips or just make a list of scenes from a particular tv uh, serial or a film and uh, you can use all that information to write a paper it would it would be very important that you are mentioning scenes and dialogues uh, to emphasize on all the points that you have mentioned mm-hmm. here so if you do not find a play you can perhaps look for uh, media clips of imran khan and any other president that you have mentioned in your presentation so as you are as long as you are discussing uh, what those clips are showing and what imran khan or trump is saying in his interview uh, it would um, it it would be useful if you want to if you are interested in doing a midterm paper on this topic uh, I, I, all i mean it would be interesting to see that paper on this topic uh, if um, you, i mean it's not essential but you can think about it yes uh, ma'am so uh, i did find one show it was actually coming up again and again in regards to the article it, it's called the uh, the handmaiden's tale so the uh, the the show was uh, criticized for not understanding what modern american misogyny is so i could try to include that i couldn't i didn't get time to fully read up and include it in this uh, presentation so okay Okay, fine. Uh, as I said before, that uh, uh, presentation was very nice, but a bit long. And uh, I think uh, I would like to hear comments from anybody. I think it was interesting to see. It was nice to see that uh, many points were covered. Uh, but in future, if you are when as and when if you, when whenever you present at a conference or at an international conference they would restrict you to time for example they would say 7 to 12 minutes is normally the time they give to a speaker so it's it's important to think about those th- things as well okay yes okay. yes i'll be mindful of that next time okay all right thank you thank, thank you, you it was it was very nice ji uh, all right uh, we can i think have maximum one more presentation unless everyone is tired uh, if you are tired then i can certainly give a break we have like 15 minutes less than 15 minutes left so uh, i wanted to ask should i present right now in the next session because mine's a little long uh, okay 
uh, I uh, one thing that everyone should try doing is like stick to duration of presentation. Um, okay. Uh, if you think you can finish in five to seven minutes, then we can have the presentation. And if you think it will take longer, I would like to know if would, it would take longer because the presentation is long or you think that question answers will make it long? No, I think for me delivering it will take a little bit of time. Um, we can have the presentations uh, in the next class. I would personally suggest them with mine because there is also some pictures and I wanted to, it to be slightly interactive. Then I can go first in the next session. Okay, so I believe you are suggesting that we should end today's session. Yeah, because it's a little tiring. Okay, all right. Okay, guys. Uh, I think in that case, we will uh, have the remaining presentations at the start of next class. Okay. Okay. Thank you, ma'am.